Good morning everybody, welcome to worship for Sunday the 12th of July 2020. It's lovely to have you joining us this morning. Just a notice to say it was decided at a Zoom meeting of the Joint Office Bearers that we held earlier this week that the church buildings of Hogkirk and South Dean with Rubers Law won't be opening at present but we'll be waiting until we enter into phase four. We'll be continuing with our online worship, but also looking to see, find new ways to reach out to the community in the intervening period. And there's more details about this can be found in the front of the worship bulletin. Let us worship God. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 65. What mighty praise belongs to you, O God. You are the hope of everyone on earth. Even those who live at the farthest ends of the earth stand in awe of your wonders. From where the sun rises to where it sets, you inspire shouts of joy. What mighty praise belongs to you, O oh God. Our first hymn this morning is For the Beauty of the Earth, which is being song to the John Rutter arrangement today, which you may not all be familiar with, but is a very beautiful arrangement. gather together in your presence with expectation, hungry for an encounter with you, eager to hear your word. 
Generous God, you sow the seeds of your word freely and widely. You do not check to see where they will fall. You simply sow and allow the seeds to land. Sometimes seeds fall on the hard path where there is no soil, but the birds of the air are able to enjoy a feast. Sometimes seeds fall on the rocky ground where there is only a little soil and the roots cannot go deep enough to allow the plant to reach its full potential. Sometimes seeds fall on soil that already has other plants to sustain and the new plants are not able to share the soil's precious resources. They are hindered in their growth. But sometimes seeds fall on empty soil where they are free to put down deep roots and to grow unhindered into their full leaf and flower. We are so glad that you sow freely, that you do not restrict your seeds to a particular place. Forgive us when we fail to sow the word seeds of your word freely. Forgive us when we judge the soil or test it before sowing. Listening God, open our eyes and ears to the presence of your Holy Spirit. May the seeds of your word scattered among us this morning fall on fertile soil. May they take root in our hearts and lives and produce an abundant harvest of good words and deeds. Help us to sow the seeds of love everywhere and anywhere, trusting that you will take care of the rest. Amen. Our first Bible reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 to 13. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that which goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Amen. What is the Word of God? What does it look like? A static word printed on a page? A word bound into sentences and locked between the dusty pages of a Bible? A word which can be put on a shelf and ignored? Brought out only for special occasions? A word that can only be uttered in the right place by the right people? A word which is centuries old? and never changes? Or is the word of God something else? If it could be made flesh in Jesus, surely it is a living thing, something that can be felt, experienced, a whisper in the dark, a shout of praise in the light, a word which isn't confined to the page, bound by paper and ink, but leaps out at us asking to speak to our situation years after it was first formed. A word which scatters like sunlight, illuminating dark corners, putting down roots in unexpected places. A word which falls like rain, refreshing and renewing the earth and all that is in it. A word that feeds and sustains, a word that cannot return empty to the one who has uttered it, but is so transforming that even the very mountains and hills burst into song and the trees clap their hands. A word that is given so freely and abundantly that unbidden it takes root in our hearts. This is the word of God. Our second Bible reading today is Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 to 9 and 18 to 23. 
That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone who has ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Thanks be to God for his word to us. We sing now, in our lives plant seeds of hope.
went out to sow his field. He hitched up his new high-tech seed drill to his tractor and filled the hopper with the exact amount of seed he would need to plant his field. As he drove up and down the field, he congratulated himself on how much m money his new equipment would save him in seed bills. Each seed was individually injected into the soil at precisely the right intervals, so not a grain was wasted. And as the tractor moved forward, each seed was covered with soil so the birds wouldn't come and steal them. The farmer was confident that this year his crop yields would be much higher than previously. All he needed now was the rain. Jesus' parable of the sower wouldn't make much sense to the farmers of today, especially not those in the developed world who rely so heavily on mechanisation in order to cut costs. The scattering of seed by hand would seem like a laborious job, not to say hugely wasteful of seed. Any modern farmer would consider good farming practice to include frugal use of resources. The manner of seed scattering described by Jesus could not be described as frugal, with no apparent regard for whether or not the seed fell on the good soil that had been ready prepared. But it scattered instead liberally and universally to take root wherever it will. Jesus doesn't reveal the identity of the sower, but in identifying the seed as the word of the kingdom, the implication is that he himself is the sower. And as we know throughout the Gospels, Jesus does not limit where he shares his word. He does not confine its spread to only those who are best placed to respond. In theory, this would be the Jewish leaders and teachers, those who know the promise of the Messiah and should have been able to see that Jesus was the fulfilment of this promise. Instead, Jesus scattered his word to those people who might seem least likely to respond, those least likely to produce a fruitful harvest. He scattered his word to an unpromising set of disciples, to tax collectors, lepers, the demon possessed, and countless other misfits in society. Then promises a spectacular return for his harvest. The expected return on Palestinian farmland at the time was approximately sevenfold. Yet in this parable, Jesus suggests the return will be at least thirtyfold, if not sixty or a hundredfold. This message recurs throughout Jesus' ministry. God's word is scattered abundantly to the whole of creation. The sower could be seen as irresponsible, over-extravagant, sowing the seeds of redemption even where they have no hope of sprouting. Yet he carries on regardless. And why is the word of God being spread so freely? Because God loves us. He loves each and every one of us. And he wants each and every one of us to have the opportunity to hear his word and to respond to him and to his love. But the role of the sower isn't restricted to Jesus. In explaining the parable to the disciples, he's helping them in their mission. He's helping them to understand that they too need to be liberal in spreading the seed, in spreading the word of God, and therefore in spreading the love of God. The parable also helps all those who take part in God's mission today. It encourages us to be free with our sharing of God's word, to allow it to fall wherever it will. Often as churches, when we develop new ideas, we are too much like the modern farmer. We work out which is the best ground for our message. We are careful about where we sow our seed and limit our work to where we think we are most likely to get a response because we only have limited resources. Yet Jesus promised the yield from deep-rooted plants will be far greater than we would expect. Recent months have shown us what happens when the word of God is spread far beyond our immediate church community. 
that when we spread God's word in unexpected places, we get unexpected results. The elders and members of the congregational board in our parishes have agreed that we don't open our buildings just yet, not just because of the risks, but because the numbers that we'll be able to meet would be so restricted. Instead, the joint worship group are going to meet and explore further new ways of sharing God's word that we have been developing over the last few months. We want to keep throwing out the seed in as many directions as possible and reminding everyone that God's love is freely given without any conditions. For all who feel they are not good enough for God's love, for all who feel they have fallen short of what God wants, this love is for you just as much as it is for anyone else you think is better than you. Every afternoon the manch chickens get a handful of grain each as a treat. We throw it to them in a manner that I imagine is similar to that used by the sower. Sometimes some of the grain falls outside the run and is missed by the chickens and a few weeks later a shoot appears. It hasn't been deliberately sown to produce a plant, yet still it has. We have no way of knowing where or why the word of God will take root. That knowledge lies with God alone. We just need to sow it wherever we can. A farmer went out to sow his field. He hitched up his old seed drill to his tractor and filled the hopper with the amount of seed he would need to plant his field. Plus a bit more because his drill wasn't as reliable as it once was. As he drove up and down the field, he pondered to himself whether it was time to invest in a new drill. One of those high tech ones that individually injected into the soil at precisely the right intervals so that not a grain was wasted and covered the grains with soil so the birds couldn't eat them. But then as he trundled up the field and the drill jerked spilling out some of the seed, he saw the birds come down and feast on the excess grain and he delighted in watching them. And as he turned the corner more grain spilled out onto the edges of the field where the soil was not as deep. But some of it might take, he thought. Eventually, though the job took him longer than it might have done, and used up a bit more grain, he decided he was happy with his old seed drill. Because at the end of the day, no matter how much or how little seed was planted, none of it would grow without rain. And that was in the hands of God. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. For all the blessings of this life, we give thanks to you, Creator God. For families, friends, colleagues, neighbours and strangers who nurture us, that the love of God may grow within. That your word, your love, like a seed, may grow to produce in us good fruit. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. For the leaders of all nations and cities, that they may lead with strong hearts and gentle hands and generous spirits, with compassion and mercy, with wisdom and grace. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. For those who serve in harm's way, those who live in dangerous places, those who live in areas of war and strife, those who live in fear, those who worry about employment, bills, food, and struggle just to find dignity in life. May your grace bring peace and safety to all people, one to another. May your love be like a seed taking root and growing strong. For those who suffer from any illness or disease of mind, body or spirit, restore these and all those we carry in our hearts to fullness of health, health as only you 
O God, can bring. May your mercy shower each of us with healing mercy and love. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. For those who are dying and for those who have died, send forth your comforting love. Give solace to those who mourn, console those who grieve. May your grace surround us like a mantle upon our heads, a shawl upon our shoulders, a hand to hold our hand. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. Amen. Our final song this morning is uh, an adaption of the reading from Isaiah uh, that we had earlier. You shall go out with joy. this morning with the blessing. Go now into the world in the light of Christ. Do not let the fear of troubles or the lure of comfort and honour prevent God's word taking root deep in your heart and mind. Walk according to the ways of the Spirit, for the ways of the Spirit are life and peace. And may God sow in you the seeds of an abundant harvest. May Christ the word be a lamp for your steps. And may the Holy Spirit give life to you, body and soul. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning.